the nano technology has huge potential to cause revolution in the field of science and technology. It has potential applications in engineering, medicine, environmental sciences, pharmaceuticals, agriculture, food technology and many others. So there is no branch of science and technology on this planet which is not influenced by nanotechnology. Now it is a huge topic. It has a number of applications. As far as the applications in medical field are concerned, there is a tremendous literature available. If you search the term nanotechnology in medical science in a Google search engine, within 34 seconds, you would get around 6, 6 crore 49 lakh sites. Majority of them are research papers, review articles, books, dissertation and thesis. Now apart from these sites, there is one entire issue of surgical clinics of North America. It is the one of the very, very, very good journal published from North America. It is entirely devoted to the applications of nanotechnology in medical sciences. Now, as I told you, it is a huge topic. There are so many things. This is not a topic to be covered in one hour or even one day, I think, is not sufficient to cover the entire nanotechnology, science of nanotechnology. There are many things which are not within the reach of understanding level of you and me also. I have tried to simplify the things and bring them within the level, within the reach of understanding level of you and me as well. I hope you appreciate my efforts. So what is nanotechnology? Now, this is a branch of science which deals with the study of nanoscale particles. So it includes the study of their peculiar characters, their potential uses in the field of medicine, engineering, agriculture, pharmaceuticals, other branches to obtain desired outcomes. It has enormous potential to solve problems and to improve quality of our lives. So it has important applications within medical fields. They include but not limited to diagnosis, treatment and management of diseases. These applications are in relation to infections, malignancies, genetic errors, and the most important, the most fertile area of research in nanotechnology is enhanced targeted drug delivery system. Currently, the work is going on this enhanced targeted drug delivery <coughs> So it provides many useful tools for detection of biomolecules and analytes. So what are the analytes? What do you mean by analytes? Can anybody tell me? What is the meaning of term analytes? It is a substance which is to be identified and measured. For example, glucose or cholesterol. These are the examples of analytes. Now, the tools relevant for diagnostic purpose are known as a nano diagnostic. Now, what is nano diagnostic? The definition is the use of methods and techniques of nanotechnology and their principles for diagnostic purpose that is detection of pathogens and cancer biomarkers. Now currently the most of the techniques of nanosciences <coughs> are working on the infectious diseases and cancer, the, the diagnosis of cancers. Okay, what are the nanoparticles? 
any material less than one micron or one micrometer <coughs> is known as a nanoparticle. What is one micrometer? It is a one thousandth part of millimeter. It is a one micrometer. And the particles which are less than one micron are nanoparticles. The word nano comes from the Greek word dwarf. A nanometer is a 10 is to minus 9 meter. One nanometer is equal to one billionth of a meter. RBC, generally, we measure size of RBC in micrometer. It is a 7 micrometer. When we take or use nano scale, the size of RBC is a 7000 nanometer. The human hair measures approximately 50,000 nm in diameter and the particles with size below 100 nm are generally accepted as nanoparticles. So what is the criteria for acceptance as a nanoparticle? The size should be less than 100 nanometer. Now historical aspects. So important landmarks I am going to cover. In 1959, the concept of nanotechnology was recognized by Richard Feynman. In 1974, the word nanotechnology was coined by a Japanese scientist, Norio Tangwich. In 1981, K. Eric Drexler established the basis for the molecular engineering and nanosystems. In 1991, Osawa for first possibility of producing 3D 60 carbon structures, 3 dimensional 60 carbon structures. And in this year, in the current year, Mongi Devandi from MIT Cambridge, Louis Peirce from Columbia University, New York, and Alexei Ekimo, Nanocrystal Technology, New York, have been awarded Nobel Prize in Chemistry for the discovery and synthesis of quantum dots. Now, what are the quantum dots? These are the inorganic crystalline particles of very small size. Their size is less than 10 nanometer. Now, synthesis of nanoparticles. How they are synthesized? Now, before we go into the details of synthesis, I would like to tell about various steps and compositions of nanoparticles. Now, nanoparticles can exist in different forms in the form of tubes, crystals, wires, spheres, rods and stars. They are known as the nanotubes, nanocrystals, nanowires, nanospheres, nanorods and nanostars. And these are the gold nanoparticles. Now several methods are used to synthesize and produce enemies. Now each method is a tailor-made method based on the type of nanoparticle to be produced. These methods include physical methods, photochemistry, sonochemistry, radiolysis, laser ablation, wall building. The chemical methods include sodium synthesis, or precipitation. And biological approaches include use of living organisms or their products. Now this is the one of the methods which I am telling, explaining to you in detail by using the extract of plants, bacteria and fungi. The extract of plants, bacteria and fungi is like a, it is a humid at 80 degrees centigrade, say 80 degrees centigrade. To this, the gold particles are added. The gold particles, when heated, there is a reduction. They are converted into gold nanoparticles. When color changes to red, it indicates that the particles have been synthesized. And these particles, they can be used for various uh, purposes. These include diagnosis, antibacterial activity, anti-cancer activity, drug delivery, etc., etc. Now these are the various types of nanoparticles. These are two types. One which is used for diagnostic purpose, second one is used for therapeutic purpose. So what are the nanoparticles commonly used for diagnostic purpose? Quantum dots, nanosense and gold nanoparticles. Now these are the nanoparticles which are commonly used, include gold nanoparticles, magnetic nanoparticles and quantum dots. Now what are the gold nanoparticles? 
the gold dado particles of a tunable size of 0.8 to 60 nanometer in diameter can be used for diagnostic purpose. They can be used for detection and quantification of analytes, detection of wall pieces of DNA. The magnetic nanoparticles, these are the nanoparticles which can be manipulated using magnetic field. They consist magnetic elements such as iron, nickel and cobalt. And the uses, they bind to suitable antibody and in magnetic immunosis, these are the particles which are commonly used for immunosis. In magnetic immunosis, magnetic field generated by magnetically labeled target is detected by magnometer. Then quantum dots. See here, what what is what are what technique is used for detection? Magnometer because of magnetic field. Now here, these are the quantum dots are inorganic crystalline fluorophores. They emit fluorescence. The technique of fluorescence is used for detection of these nanoparticles. They emit fluorescence. These are the crystals of cadmium selenide. The size is less than 10 nm in diameter. This technique can be combined with fluorescent microscopy. These nanoparticles are useful in genotyping, whole blood assays, DNA mapping, immunoassays, and antibody tagging, detection of pathogenic microbes. So what are the different nanodiagnostic techniques used? Now before going into the details of techniques, I would like to tell you that medical diagnosis is a, one of the most challenging areas. Diagnosis of suspected disease is the most critical step in medicine. Why? Because accurate diagnosis of disease by markers decide, it is a deciding factor in initiating the treatment, appropriate treatment based on diagnosis. And what are the limitations of currently available test? The sensitivity and specificity. And because of poor sensitivity and poor specificity, there is a problem of reproducibility. The results are repro not reproducible as far as the currently available techniques are concerned. Now, NT has, nanotechnology has ability to enable early detection of disease. It plays important role in prevention of disease, the treatment of disease, and in addition to that, follow-up of many life-threatening diseases. Now, what are the nanoparticles based platforms in nanodiagnostics? The first and most important is the nanotechnology on the chip. Most commonly used technique. It is also known as a lab on a chip technology. Now, it is a modern technology, simple device, usually made of glass or silicon. Now try to understand. Now here, the DNA probes of different diseases or disease causing organisms or different cancers, they are sprayed on the glass or silicon base. Silicon base. How they are spread? They have different size and different charges. Now based on their size and charges, when you apply electric current, there is a separation. And when you add sample to these separated DNA molecules, suppose your interest is a detection of tuberculosis. Now that sample goes to that DNA probe which is a complementary fit for that sample. And there is a, the reaction is a highly specific and it is a highly sensitive. It reacts with corresponding probe only. And DNA molecules in sample that hybridize with target DNA sequence, as I told you, there is a fluorescence. And this fluorescence is detected by onboard system by using the hardware 
or another device. The fluorescence is detected, then there is a fluorescence positive for fluorescence, test is positive, indicating that particular organism or particular biomarker. Now these are two types. Lab on chip technique is of two types. One is a nanofluidic arrays and second one is protein nanochips. Two types of techniques. We will see one by one in detail. These are the most commonly used techniques as of today. Now this is a biochip. One of the Indian scientists developed such type of nanochip from laboratory test. And this is the this is the system known as a nanochip analyzer. It is used for analysis of chip. Now there is a combination of numerous process of DNA analysis from combined of the single chip. Now the single chip produces all processes which are required for the DNA analysis. Now here, this chip consists of microfluidic channels because it is a microfluidic array. It is a different from protein nanochip method. Now here there are channels. Now when you place sample, the DNA containing solution when placed on a fluid entry port, there are two ports, one for this uh, sample purpose and another one for reagent purpose. So when these two are placed, what happens? This device is able to teaser, amplify, digest the DNA molecule, separate the DNA strand and the detail to detect the DNA, it has ability to detect the DNA which is present in sample. These are the reactions which take place. Initially, there is a placing of sample, placing of reagent. The reagent, the sample, the DNA goes through that part and reaches to the appropriate DNA molecule and then there is a separation that process of analysis is completed and finally it is detected by using appropriate method. Now, what are the uses of lab on the chip for isolation and analysis of individual biomolecules such as DNA, which is very much useful in the diagnosis of cancer. Then for detection of disease causing organisms and to isolate and analyze specific cells, proteins and generic material. The second one is the protein microarrays or chips. Now this is a very very powerful tool for screening of thousands of proteins at a time. Now here the surface of silica nanoparticles having size less than 100 nm. They are configured with different proteins. What are these proteins? These proteins are nothing but antibodies and enzymes. And these are immobilized in an array format on a glass slide. Now when the surface of slide is poured with sample, again that binds with the corresponding antibodies on chip and this binding with antibody or corresponding enzyme is detected by device. This is a protein microarray chips. Now this is one of the examples. Now here this is a patient sample, now this is a cartridge used, the sample is placed, it is placed in this portable analyzer, it gives results, adults analysis and if collected to smartphone, the results are available on your smartphone. This is another example for detection of virus, now here sample is placed, reaction takes place, the reaction is either immunization or that and the, this is the final detection, the analyzed by device and if device is connected to your mobile phone, the results are available on your mobile phone. Now this is another example, here the sample is unknown sample for bacteriological analysis, for the scooter or urine etc. Then it is a nano array and this nano array is used for digital polymerase chain reaction. Now, when processed by device, it shows the presence of organism. On the basis of PCR result, it shows that if this sample contains two types of organisms, A and B, 
Further, it is processed for sensitivity of susceptibility studies and it shows that this A is a susceptible to antibiotics and B is resistant to antibiotics. This is another example of nano array digital polymerase chain reaction. So this is the first technique is the lab biology. The second one is the nano bio sensors. Now these are made up of two elements. Biological element is used for sampling. Physical element for processing of sample for the results. Now here the nano particles have ability to identify certain cells or areas in the body. Now this ability makes them biosensors. Now these are able to recognize genetic defects earlier due to their potential to detect DNA. Now what happens here? Now various, the sample contains antibodies, enzymes, antigen. Now what is present in sample? Now the first part is a biological element, bioreceptor. Second part is a transducer and third part is a detector. So bioreceptor, transducer and the third part is a detector and this sample is analyzed and this is connected to laptop or mobile. The results are available on laptop and mobile within no time. The third one is a nano laser scanning on model support spectroscopy. spectroscopy sorry. Now this technique has capability of single cell resolution. Because only one cell of cancer cell is circulating in your blood sample that can be detected by using this technique. It is known as a nano scale or cell molecule identification. So what are the applications of nanotechnology in healthcare? Ten number of applications. Gene therapy, drug delivery, cancer therapy, genetic disorder, acular diseases, cardiovascular diseases, neurological disorders, then anti-based bactericide. It is a bactericidal agent. Bactericidal agent which is effective against microbes. Anti in wound healing. See, it can be used for healing of wounds, which are not or refractory to conventional therapies. Then nanoparticles as antimicrobials to treat infection by MDR. Multiple drug resistance is a grave problem. To treat the multi drug resistant organisms, nanoparticles can be used. NT in nosocomial infections, nanotechnology in nosocomial infections. Nosocomial infections, what will it place? The NT is used for cleaning <coughs> of instruments, various devices which are the potential sources of nosocomial pathogens. Then, adding for different imaging approaches to improve the resolution of MRI, CT, and PET. Then, anti in vaccine production. This technology can be used for production of vaccine also. And anti in laboratory medicine. Now, in laboratory medicine, it plays important for the diagnosis and prognosis of your diseases. What are the examples? Now, currently, as I told you, the research is being focused on infectious diseases and cancer. Now, in infectious diseases, it is useful in detection of small number of viruses with high degree of sensitive transmissions. That we are going to discuss. What is sensitivity and what is resistance? Rapid diagnosis of COVID-19 by using gold particles. Biosensors to identify single virus particle. You see, uh, the currently available test requires larger load of virus particles. But here, even if single virus particle is present, that can be detected by using nanotechnology. Then, to separate bacteria, viruses and other components of blood. The role in the diagnosis of cancer, early diagnosis of cancer, to detect DNA molecules, which are the early indicators of cancer, to detect cancer cells in blood stream, to detect indicators of bladder and prostate cancer in urine, diagnosis of brain cancer, micro in blood stream, to detect protein indicative of oral cancer. Now, this, provide, this technique provides results in 
less than one hour and to detect cancer cells in bloodstream. Now, in addition to this, it plays important role in the diagnosis of genetic disorders. And other roles, highly sensitive biases are can detect even very low levels of biologics in body fluids, early detection of kidney damage and detecting by detecting protein generated by damaged kidneys. Why fascination? This is very important. Why there is a fascination for nanotechnology? Now, increased advancements in nanosciences in recent times led to the fascinating innovations. Everybody accepts. Many innovations are very, very fascinating beyond our imagination. Major fascinating benefits of anti medical diagnosis include sensitivity and specificity. These are the very, very important things as far as the accurate diagnosis of any disease is concerned. Now, because of high sensitivity and high specificity, results are more accurate than traditional diagnostic methods. Now, you all know. Who is he? Madhuri Dixit. And who is he? Any ideas? Don't know. Who is this? Anil Kapoor. Who is this? Shakti Kapoor. Who is this? Moni Kapoor. What is the relation between Moni Kapoor and Anil Kapoor? They are brothers. Okay. And who is this? Yes? Any idea? He is a duplicate of Anil Kapoor. <laughs> Looks like Anil Kapoor, but not Anil Kapoor. Now, the universal rule says, or universal law says that two unlike poles attract each other, and two like poles repel each other. Now, here, as far as Madhuri is concerned, it should not matter whether it is a Bhushan Kaur, Anil Kapoor, Shakti Kapoor, Boni Kapoor or duplicate of Anil Kapoor. Am I right? But the reaction does not occur with Bhushan Kaur. <laughs> Shakti Kapoor, even though Boni Kapoor is a brother of Anil Kapoor and even though that duplicate is quite similar to Anil Kapoor. Now this is why? Because there is a specificity. Madhuri will react with Anil Kapoor only. Because reaction is highly specific. And even if the Anil Kapoor is hidden, he is not visible, she will search and find Anil Kapoor and react with Anil Kapoor only. This is sensitivity. So specificity is a reaction between corresponding biomolecules only, with bi corresponding biomolecules. And what is the sensitivity? Even if it is a presenting very, 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 very minute amount. See, in nano little size, what is the speciality of nanotechnology? It requires nano little size of specimen. So even if it is a very, very less amount, the presenting very less amount, the reaction occurs. That is the sensitivity and specificity that matters a lot in accuracy of result and that is the speciality of nanotechnology. Next, diagnosis at earlier stage. Now, this offers potential stoppage of disease process. Now, diagnosis is possible even before the presentation of symptoms. And because of that, you can initiate treatment and early, at earlier stage and that prevents the further damage. Next, rapid testing. The results are quick and accurate. Diagnosis of infectious diseases, cancer and other diseases. Now, enable timely treatment and prevention. Now, starting of treatment on same day is possible. That is within one visit to doctor. If a patient from periphery comes and if you ask him to come repeatedly for investigation purpose and for other things, he will be frustrated in due course of time. 
if he comes in the morning and if you start treatment in the evening, he would be very happy. And this is possible with the help of nanotechnology. Cost, as far as the cost is concerned, most of the nanodiagnostic techniques are very, very cost effective as compared to the traditional methods. Sample size, as I told you, told you very, very, very small size of sample in nanoliter is required. You can assess the prognosis of disease in between <coughs> and they are very, very less numbers. Not tedious, like traditional methods. To conclude, NT is the future of medicine, not only the medicine, but also all of the branches of science and technology going to influence works of our life. Thank you very much for your And once again, very much thank you to the organizers, Dr. Sudhir Deshmukh, Dr. Jaikar sir, Dr. Dohishar sir, and Dr. Rohit. Really, uh, it matters a lot for me as it is my alma mater. Thank you very much for patient listening to you all. Immediately when someone says nano, we would link to this lecture. Thank you so much, sir.